Okay, so I want to share my testimony on what the Lord saved me from, and that is masturbation and pornography. And it's not very easy to share this because I was exposed to it at a very, very young age, and it's a very sad thing. But I don't really remember the timeline when all of it happened, but I just remember being exposed to it at my cousin's house. That's where it all started. Um, you know, one of my cousins, she was very just boy crazy, just very boy crazy. And, you know, she was in, in high school and I was in elementary school. And, you know, that's where I was learning these things from, was from her, you know, she was boy crazy. And then also the shows that I would be watching at a young age, you know, um, that show Next, you know, shows like that. And, um, and it all started when I was over at my cousin's house. I would stay the night at their house a lot. And um, one night, my cousins were up late at night and their friends are over. And, <clears throat> and they were just watching pornography on the big screen late at night. Like, like it was a regular, just regular movie. And they were watching porn and, and I was just very curious after seeing that, you know, I was, I don't know what happened. I think I fell asleep and then I woke up to, to the noise and then I went to the living room and I just saw that they were watching porn. And, you know, just lately I've been realizing that that's where where everything was exposed was there at my cousin's house and you know because I was around other people and I wasn't exposed to these type of things it was only at their house and you know they didn't know any better they didn't know they didn't have anybody telling them like hey that's wrong and so I was curious after that and then I had my first orgasm um, you know this is very TMI <laughs> especially after being saved. But, you know, that first feeling um, was maybe like six or seven. I don't really remember. I don't know what age it is that you get to play on the big playground that it's not kindergarten where it's all like gated and stuff and it's just certain children. It's like, I was on the big playground, so it could have been seven or eight. I don't, I'm not really too sure about the timeline. And, that was it like I went I was playing on the playground I went down this pool and it was a wrap after that I didn't know what that feeling was and I was very very addicted to that feeling and it, it was just very crazy like I started like humping anything and just anything and everything and I was just so addicted to this feeling and I didn't even know what it was I just knew that it felt good and and you know just being exposed to this at a, at a very young age, I mean, thank the Lord that that I didn't get curious enough to, you know, just sleep around at a very young age. That I still, I still, you know, saved myself after high school, but still, like, I should have waited until marriage, but nobody was teaching me that. And, um, so yeah, that's when it all started. That's when it all started. And, and the world wants to tell you that these things are normal women will tell you like oh that's normal like i you know had that same feeling too at a very young age and then like you don't know what what that feeling is like you can't really tell anybody and we should be talking about these things and no it's not it's not normal it's not normal at all it's very demonic all of it is just very demonic and yeah, that's, you know, being around my cousin, that's how I became very boy crazy. I was super boy crazy, like having boyfriends in like third grade, fourth grade, just always being in a relationship and just always being so desperate. That's where desperation came into and, and rejection and all those feelings. And, um, 
you know, we should really be talking to children about these things. You know, so I experienced that up until 28. 28 is when I got saved. And that feeling of, you know, master masturbation, like, I was doing that since a very young age, up until 28. And, you know, when it, when it starts, it starts and, and you just want to keep going, keep going, keep going, like nothing will satisfy you. And then it started, you know, leaking into other things like, oh, then, you know, I'm a, you know, I'm gay. And then, um, watching really disturbing pornography and, you know, I was addicted to that in high school, watching pornography, but it always felt disgusting. Like it, it always felt wrong. All of the things that I was doing just felt wrong. And it just, you know, with masturbation, it just felt like something was always watching me. Like that it wasn't just me in the room. It always felt like somebody was just there watching me. And I just felt weird after. And that's an addicting feeling because then I would do it like two or three times a day. I would try to like push myself like, oh, I hear other women like they they do it how, however many times a day or, you know, however many times during sex or whatever. And so I like try to like push myself. But yeah, I was just <laughs> addicted to these things up until the age of 28. It's just a very sad thing to just go through life like that. And the world just tell you, hey, it's normal. Oh, yeah, these things are normal. Like, and it's not normal. And it's something that is never satisfying. That type of sin, is it, it's never satisfying. But yeah, like I said, then then I, I started watching porn where it was just, you know, lesbian. So it was like, oh, you know, women, I'm attracted to women. And oh, I think I'm gay. And, and exploring in that area. And just wanting to get my own place. And, and just having fun and experimenting. And, you know, thank the Lord that he stopped it every time. And, you know, what I wanted to live, like, I, I never got to experience that, thank the Lord. You know, we should definitely, we should definitely talk to our children about these things. And be very cautious of what our children are watching. If we don't take care of our children, the world will. And look at what the world was teaching me, that it's normal and it's okay and it's not. Like, the Lord has set me free from all that. And thank the Lord. It wasn't a, a difficult process for me. Like, oh, <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, I've been sober for, or celibate, I mean, I've been celibate for two years, going on two years in September. Um, it was a very hard process because I was in a relationship at that time and it was very 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 hard for me to let go of it because I was addicted like when I had that urge or whatever like oh I have to do it I have to have sex you know I had that urge that I had to to satisfy see you see how it's never just one thing it's always just like another 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 you're never satisfied so that's just how it was for me and the person that I was dating at the time you know he was a Christian <laughs> and he told me that he didn't want to have sex anymore because, I mean, at the beginning of the relationship, he didn't want to, and I was pushing him. I was like trying to, trying to um, seduce him and everything. I wasn't respecting his boundaries. I wasn't respecting him. And so, you know, I got him into having sex and then he felt guilty afterwards so after that he was just like I can't do this anymore and then I told him I was like well I love sex I need to have sex so I'm not gonna stop and he said well if you want to be with me then that's the conditions that we're not gonna have sex until marriage and so it was me choosing this lifestyle or choosing him and I chose him and I stopped, we stopped having sex. You know, we had slip ups, we played with fire a lot. But yeah, September, two years ago, <laughs> that's when, when I stopped and I just like, cold turkey it. I, I just, I stopped, I stopped. 
And after that moment, it wasn't hard for me. I didn't have struggles. I didn't have urges to just do it. Like, I just completely just ignored it. Like, I didn't even think about it. Nothing. And pornography, same. Um, I just cold turkey it. I didn't, I wasn't like, oh, I need to watch porn. Like, it wasn't like that at all. I, I left it and haven't thought about it. And I haven't had, you know, struggles with it. Thank the Lord. Um, he really did set me free from it. And he can set you free from it too. He definitely can set you free. Call on the name of Jesus and with Christ we are made new. In Christ we are made new creatures. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And the Lord has set me free and he can set you free too. And don't let the world lie to you and tell you like, oh, that's normal. So it can justify your sin and make you feel better at night. It's not, it's not right. And it's very demonic. Demon, you know, I used to have um, demons have sex with me at night. Um, it still happens sometimes here and there. I always just have to plead the blood of Jesus before I go to sleep. But... I mean, I still have dreams, like, even in my dreams, like, I'll have moments where, um, where it feels like that same feeling of, you know, just orgasm, like, I still have those feelings in my dream, but it's not real, you know, and I just know that it's just me being attacked, and the devil is a liar, and, you know, I really had to just pray before going to sleep, pleading the blood of Jesus, and commanding them to go in the name of Jesus. Yeah, just don't let the world lie to you and tell you these lies, feed you these lies. It's not normal. You know, it's very demonic. These demons will have sex with you while you're sleeping and you're opening up doors. And you need to close these doors and ask the Lord to give you strength to be able to let this go. Call on the name of Jesus. And I pray that this video helped you in some way and I'm just very happy to be free in the name of Jesus that I just cold turkey it and <laughs> you can do it too you can do it too nothing is impossible for the Lord and he wants to help you he wants to guide you he wants to be there for you and you just call on his name and he's there I love you and Jesus loves you too.